So the point is for these damaged women to spend their husband's money to come to grips with their own suppressed white supremacy. This goes on for two hours, from the appetizers to the dessert. There's a whole film on this, and we watched the whole thing, and suffered as we did it, to bring you the highlights. Here's how the typical dinner goes. So the night begins with the white ladies introducing themselves and conceding that they are the worst people in the world because they are white. Watch. I am a liberal white woman. We are absolutely the most dangerous women out there. We are the most dangerous women that exist because we're gonna love a little more because we're good freaking people. No, we are erasing their experiences. We are erasing their lives. We are erasing the danger that they're in. I'm an artist and a barista. And I learned about this through Syrah, through your Facebook. The reason I'm here is because I've always thought of myself as being like kind of woke. And I mean, you know, my best friend is Mexican. My partner is biracial. We have these conversations all the time. But then through following your posts and interacting on your posts, I realized I'm not doing that great. <laughs> and I feel like there's a racist white man living in my brain and it's my dad's voice. I hate my dad. Of course, that's what it's all about on some level. Yes, sir. You just found it. In a course with you. Let's chat. Welcome to the Inner Course Show. I am your host, Mr. B. Today we have a very exciting show for you. We will be discussing Tucker Carlson's reaction to the new documentary called Deconstructing Karen. Now, Deconstructing Karen is supposed to be a documentary done where uh, affluent white women essentially hire two women to come in to kind of get them to confess to their hatred for uh, people of other races. And these women are supposed to somehow acknowledge these things so that they can essentially move on from them. Um, I believe there's two LGBTQ women who are in a relationship that essentially curate the dinners. Um, they're paid some money to do it. And then they go ahead and kind of you know, uh, get these women on the same page, essentially saying the same things. So today I'm joined by my panel. I have uh, the beautiful Zoe in the building, as well as Miss Mocha, otherwise known as Queen Consciousness. Um, you guys can certainly follow her YouTube, but they will join our panel. And as women, I'd love to get their feedback, you know, on how they feel about this particular clip. So without any further ado, we'll go ahead and get right into the video. Let's go ahead and get started. There's a new documentary about Syra Rao and her partner. It's called Deconstructing Karen. And it's about Syra and her partner, Regina Jackson, and their new company, Race to Dinner. So these two essentially host dinners for liberal wine moms all over the country. Here's how it works. A group of affluent white women pool $5,000 to hire these two, Jackson and Rao, to come to their home for a dinner party. And then over the course of the night, they demean and degrade them and call them racist. They're paid to do that. It's a weird masochism ritual. So the point is for these damaged women to spend their husband's money to come to grips with their own suppressed white supremacy. This goes on for two hours from the appetizers to the dessert. There's a whole film on this, and we watched the whole thing and suffered as we did it to bring you the highlights. Here's how the typical dinner goes. So the night begins with the white ladies introducing themselves and conceding that they are the worst people in the world because they are white. Watch. I am a liberal white woman. We are absolutely the most dangerous women out there. We are the most dangerous women that exist because we're going to love a little more because we're good freaking people. No, we are erasing their experiences. We are erasing their lives. We are erasing the danger that they're in. I'm an artist and a barista, and I learned about this through Syrah, through your Facebook. The reason I'm here is because 
I've always thought of myself as being like kind of woke. And I mean, you know, my best friend is Mexican. My partner is biracial. We have these conversations all the time. But then through following your posts and interacting on your posts, I realized I'm not doing that great. (laughs) And I feel like there's a racist white man living in my brain and it's my dad's voice. I hate my dad. Of course, that's what it's all about on some level. But the best is white women, we're the most dangerous people in the world. So, of course, that's not true. The silliest people in the world, for sure, the most dangerous, hardly. But you'll notice that's not really self-abdignation. That's not self-criticism. It's really bragging. We're so dangerous. We're so dangerous. We're so bad, meaning we're so strong and so powerful and so important, so significant in world history. So as the rich white ladies attack themselves, the instructors join in. You think you're bad? You're even worse than that. Watch. You know what I expect of white women? Not a damn thing. Nothing. I expect nothing of you because you have never given me anything. I can't trust you. You guys need to pull your heads out of your asses, acknowledge your own racism, make it right, stop caping for white dudes, join us, and let's overthrow the patriarchy. You walk through the world with a different experience because you are a white woman. White women feel the desperate need to be nice. It's white women's niceness that is killing us all. At these dinners, we see white women behaving badly. White Democratic women are attacking white Republican women and vice versa. And you you both are taking the moral high ground and you're all the same. Before the dinners, white women respond much better to other white women than they would with us. And that, in a nutshell, white supremacy. I have this discussion with people that I know, friends, lawyers, everybody, and they'll say, well, Regina, you know, there are some good white people. And I'll go, well, what have the good white people been doing for the last 450 years? (laughs) Of course, the white people just paid you $5,000 to yell at them over dinner. So funny. And of course, the Indian lady is the single whitest person at the dinner. But let's overthrow the patriarchy. Of course, they already overthrew the patriarchy. That's why they're so desperately unhappy. So the dinner goes on like this for two hours. And at one point, finally, two white women speak up to say, actually, we don't really think we're that racist. That's why we're paying you $5,000 to show that we're not. Ooh, shouldn't have said that. The instructors give them a public thrashing in front of the other ladies. Watch. I have two young children and it's important for me that they grow up colorblind right so i've heard this a couple times already um colorblind and you don't see color and i'm just going to drop the bomb here that's white supremacy my kids are biracial so my husband is hispanic and white and i don't see color i don't see so how she said i'm i'm blinded to color like it doesn't Phase me at all. You've mentioned it and you've mentioned it. Being married to a black person or a brown person, having brown or black children does not make you impervious to racism. You cannot, frankly, fuck your way out of racism. You can marry a black dude, but you're still racist because it's blood guilt, of course. It's inherent. You were born with it, it's in your DNA. Well, that's just kind of Rwanda stuff at that point, but they keep going. At the end of the dinner, the instructors ask for a show of hands of who at the table could now admit that they're racist. And of course, every single white woman, because they're all sheep, raises her hand and the group cheers in celebration. So who in this room, raise your hand if you're a racist. Yay! <laughs> We did it. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. It feels like we're watching something culturally significant. The fever's probably already broken. That already looks a little bit antique, watching it even now. But in 10 years, we're going to be living in a completely different country, with a white minority, by the way. That will look even older and stranger. And what will we make of it? What should we make of it? What does that tell us about the people who run our country? And just to be clear, Most people would never participate in something like that on either end of it, either as a host or one of the hapless 
high paying guests. But the people who do stuff like that and improve it are the ones who are in charge of everything in America. So what should we make of them? Younger people say the new Okay. So that was just the clip we just watched of the Tucker Carlson um, video. And I'd love to get your feedback, ladies, as to what your thoughts are on what you just watched. Do you feel that <laughs> white women entitled Karens, uh, and for those who not who don't aren't familiar with some of these terms, a Karen is generally a stuck up white woman who's constantly calling the police on anyone who's not white to complain because they feel entitled to having things their way and only their way. So there's a term um, given to those type of women, we call them Karens or they get called Karens for that reason. Um, so with that said, you guys are black women. Having watched the clip, I wanna first get your individual thoughts on what you saw, and then I'll pose some questions to you as we discuss it, and I'll also express my opinion um, about you know the, 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 the material we just watched. So would anyone like to break the ice as to what your initial thoughts are with regards to what you just watched? Do you feel that this is a justified uh, measure that should be taken and kind of carried across the board? Or does this seem a bit gimmicky and just outlandish and foolish to you? How about you start, Zoe? Any thoughts? Okay. Um, yeah, that just comes across like a bunch of BA foolishness. Like, I, I don't understand why is this, why is this even necessary? Um, it, and this, to use the word, it just seems gimmicky. It seems like a yet another thing why women do to pacify us about, see, we, you know, it's like a fake solidarity thing, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't understand the whole point of the, the 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 coming to dinner and the um who's racist at the end and all of this. Like people are, are much more self aware than they pretend to be. And I don't need you to do some weird form of penance about being racist or your microaggressions or all your all of those things. Just be mindful and be better, you know? So mm -hmm. that's just my thought on that. It's a good take. Okay, what about you, Miss Mocha? Latte, what's, 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 what's your thoughts? I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> I found one thing funny because I agreed with it. When none of anything the women said, but what What's his name? Tucker. Tucker Carlson. Yeah. What he said, and that was um. Dang, I forgot. It's, it's so much going through my head, but I just would have liked to have a seat at that table. I think okay. I would have been a more down to earth, conscious, opinionated person at that table but I mean I need I need more information I don't I don't really have like one opinion okay. um, um, my thoughts initially I personally feel that that video was a little hard to watch really really hard to watch I thought it was kind of absurd what I was watching it felt very gimmicky to me. It felt as if this was a political stunt, if you will. Someone who essentially um, orchestrated this kind of, you know, segment as if it was something that anybody should take seriously. 
So the premise here is that these white women are paying two um, LGBTQ members to come into their home to sit down and essentially convict them of their racism that they themselves never really have acknowledged they've had. And at the end of the process, we knew that that, pro that whole thing was successful if all the women in the room raised their hands and said that they were actually racist. When throughout the process, it seems some of them were starting to question like the validity of some of this experiments. And they literally said, well, wait, we're, we're not really racist. I mean, one person was actually dating someone who was a different color. One person had a mixed child. Um, and a couple other women spoke up and said that they, you know, they didn't um, have any animosity. So for me, it felt very inauthentic. It did not feel like these women actually felt like this. It felt staged. It felt like it was something that should not be taken seriously. Um, it felt like a political stunt. It felt like there were two feminist women within an agenda, and that agenda is to pin men against women. Um, it felt like they were rallying women to essentially join forces, whether they were women from the LGBTQ community or women who were conservative leaning or women who just didn't necessarily share their views. When the Indian lady said, let's rally together and take and come against the patriarchy. I felt like that was essentially the purpose of this is to get women on the same mindset, saying the same exact things for the sake of women as a group challenging the authority of men. And because I think that's where there's a lot of division, right? It's because women outnumber men from a political standpoint, it gives women voting leverage. But the thing is not a lot of women are always on the same page in terms of how they should vote. So you're trying to see this effort, in my view, to kind of get all women or coerce all women to get on the same page against some group, whether it's, hey, you know, you may be a, a, a different colored woman. Um, so we may have different views based on our on on our on our appearance. But if we join forces, whether we're we believe in different things, if we join forces, we could come against this group as opposed to, you know, being an individual with your own ideology and with your own thoughts and with your own opinions. And I think for me, it feels forced as a black person watching that. I felt extremely uncomfortable because I don't necessarily need um, a white woman to confess that she's racist to me. It doesn't make me feel any better about myself or any better about the situation. Um, it doesn't reassure me that they're all of a sudden not <laughs> if they were <laughs> simply because they <laughs> stated it at a dinner. <laughs> And it's just, to me, it seems so basic and like really low level disgraceful, actually. Disingenuous. Disingenuous is a great word to kind of express it. And so I was not a fan of watching that whole exercise. I think it's very off-putting. I think it's something that's meant to kind of spew hate between different groups, whether it's hate between blacks and whites, hate between men and women, um, hate between, you know, LGBTQ and, you know, heterosexual people. It's just things that's meant to be divisive. And I just don't know that constantly pointing out differences and constantly honing in and focusing on what sets us apart is the way to move forward and be more united. So, Having said that, you know, I'd love to get y'all thoughts on what you think um, about the video. I'll go ahead and yield the floor back to you, Zoe. Let me know. And, um, you know, 
we'll go ahead and move on from there. What's your thoughts? Well, it's like you said, you know, it just seems the whole video, the whole exercise seemed a whole um, unnecessary. Completely. Uh, and, you know. Go ahead. And it's just, um, it just seems like, like we said, just disingenuous and, and contrived and okay, let's, let's find something that's not, it just, see, it just seems so forced. Like mm -hmm. it, it didn't make any sense. Like why would, how is them raising their hands because you, you denigrated and you, you shame them into saying that they're racist. Like it doesn't work that way. You know, mm -hmm. um, people's prejudice, prejudices and biases are innate and it's, it's going to take a lot more than sitting at a round table and being told off to get to, for them to get rid of it. So I just, you know, I just didn't get it. <laughs> it did nothing for me. For you. Okay. You got any thoughts, uh, Miss Mocha? Um, it just kind of reminds me of um, the same type of the mentality of the white people who tell us to get over the word, the N word. I'm not going to say it. It's just a word. You know, just the ignorance behind um, the feeling of that word and just being, you know, subjugated, you know, just being treated a certain way because of the skin of your, the color of your skin. Um, very insensitive. I agree with both of you. It's ingenuous. It's insensitive. They don't get it. It's very clear throughout the whole thing. When will they get it? Who knows? When you, say, when you say that, when you say they don't get it, what do you mean they don't get get it? They can't understand. They can't empathize, and and they don't get it because they're not black. They're not Mexican. Whatever, whatever they they try to justify being married to someone else having mixed children, I mean. Okay, so, so it sounds like what you're saying is you thought this video was a legitimate video that should be done. Like you thought that those women should um, do these things. You thought like this was a genuine thing? I said, I just said it was disingenuous. I agree with the both of you, it's disingenuous. And the whole thing is insensitive because I don't think they really care. That. I don't think they care. They don't give it. They not. They don't care. This reminds me of the same group of people, type of people who say, "Oh, the N word is just the N word. Get over it. There's no hurt behind the N word." That just reminds me of that. Except they're wealthy white women with nothing better else to do. I don't. Well, I, I don't feel represented at the table. Exactly. I don't know how fake it is. They're fake. I don't know. I don't care about political, but I'm just, that's what my viewpoint is. Okay. So I'm going to actually bring this into context. I think the video from Tucker Carlson's standpoint was more satire to say white women shouldn't necessarily go through with an exercise. They don't need to pretend as if they are sympathetic and that they are essentially playing the optics game to convey a message to other people of different races that they are sympathetic to their cause and their things. No one and, asked for that. But well, here's the thing. I think that's the point of the video in terms of how he presented it. What he was trying to say is that, look, the country's not perfect. There are people who are racist. They are, they are racist and they do exist. But that does not really represent the full majority of the, of the people in the country. 
And I feel like there's more of a campaign of people who are trying to pin these divisive things to pin a white person against a black person or to make a white person do these things. The question is, are the viewers critically thinking through what they're seeing? Because, you know, if you draw out of this, oh yeah, those people are racist and they're, they're just not really confessing to that, then I think you're kind of missing the point. The point is, yes, we can acknowledge that some racism exists and some people do feel it and they do suppress it. We can acknowledge that. But do you as a black women, woman or do I as a black man feel more assured by a staged dinner where people who don't necessarily represent my viewpoint are curating what these women should be saying to admit guilt to something that they may or may not feel. Now, I think his point was he was making fun of it to say, okay, this, this lady is dating a black man. Another lady had a child with the black man. And you want them all to raise their hand and admit that they're racist when in actuality they're doing things that would speak against that. It seems, it seems foolish in nature to even suggest that people who have married or procreated with a person of the opposite race, now you need them to confess that they're actually racist, even though they've made decisions that go contrary to that storyline. That was sort of the undertone of what he was saying is that this is preposterous. Why, why would black people need to hear that from a group of white women to feel assured that they're really not racist? It, to me, that's foolish, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like procreate with a person of color does not mean you don't have races you, you don't have microaggressions and you're not racist. And we've seen it plenty of time where you know share, share with me. marry into color and and uh, when it came down to where they had to pick a side or deal with a situation, it it read it ugly head. So those two things can be right at the same time you can you can be racist and still be with someone of color or have mixed children okay you can okay so in your view and i think this this really kind of makes the discussion that much more interesting i would agree with you but i thought people who were truly racist unless it was like I'm, I'm sure you can use examples of slave masters having sex with their, you know, servants and stuff who's of different colors. And it's more of a thing where it's like, I'm not actually trying to parent a kid. I'm just raping you. Right. Like I'm taking advantage of you. But these are people in today's society who is making a choice to have children by a person of the opposite sex or, or a couple of those. That's that wasn't the full representation. But to me, I feel like if that's the case. A true racist wouldn't do that. I I can't understand if I hate this particular person, why would I then want to create or combine my genes and 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 stuff with the person that that does not reflect something that I want? Okay, it's because it, it goes back to what the lady was saying about oh, I had a kid and I don't see color. People need to really stop saying that. Because you have to see color. Because color, seeing color is what makes you aware of what's going on. The differences of people, yeah. So you have to see color. But you, someone, they may not be racist to the full extent of racism, but there are issues that they may have. They could either be dating that person of color to be rebellious to their family not because they really and truly want to do it they could do it because they think it's a thing or it's it's the thing to do to say that you've been with a black guy or to say you've been with you've had sex with a black woman i know of a gentleman who was married to a white woman had kids with her and in the eight years of it together everything was cool and one day they got into an argument and it went crazy left. And she mm. called out his name, <laughs> called him all kinds of stuff, even threatened to call the cops 
on her husband. Who was, and he basically was looking at her like, I'm a black man, you're a white woman, and you threatened because we got in an argument to call the cops on me, knowing what the, what that could lead to. And this is where I said they may not be fully aware that they're racist, but they are. And their actions, their actions will show it at one time or the other. So I just think from that video, I just don't, I just don't, they don't need to champion the cause of black people, that right there. Whatever that they were trying to do, championing the cause of black people to prove that white women are inherently racist and all that, we didn't need it. We already know. Just, just do better. You know? Okay, I understand. Now, in light of that, I think that's a fair point. I mean, I think there's probably relationships because that actually leads us into the next video we're going to be watching, the Jonathan Major situation. There you had a biracial couple, right? And they were obviously together. And the very next thing, you know, there were some disagreements um, presented. And next thing you know, you know, the guy's running away to protect himself from any sort of, you know, accusations and things of that nature. And then it ends up that it becomes this racial thing that happens in the courtroom where he's now being accused of a crime and certain evidence wasn't necessarily presented. And he was found guilty for running away from the situation, even though it was she ended up getting arrested for assaulting him. Um, before we get into that, though, before we segment into that, I know there's still some people who may have some thoughts about what we just watched. So go ahead. Um, I know uh, Miss Mocha wanted to kind of finish her point on it. Um, so go ahead. I had a question a long time ago. <laughs> okay, it's kind of it, it flows with the conversation, but now you don't jump like to different subjects. No, we're not seg seg we're not making that that transition yet. But go ahead. I wanted to ask you. You said something about it being a satire. Yeah. No. The whole I thing wasn't real. No. What I'm saying is, the way that Tucker Carlson presented the video was to say that this is an absurd exercise that really serves no purpose. So and the obviously. exercise is real. It's not like something like SNL or no, 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 no. It's not, it's not, it's not SNL. Like that actually happened. There's actually a documentary with these two women who are out on a mission. The Indian woman and the black woman are out on a mission, supposedly, mm -hmm. to have to host these dinners with a, a group of affluent white women to get them on the same messaging, essentially. That's what he's presenting. And the way his reaction is framed is to say, this is an absurd, um, like an absurd trend. <laughs> the fact that anyone would feel that this is a necessary thing to do to somehow denounce racism is foolish, right? If a person was indeed truly racist, right? They probably wouldn't sit at your dinner table and have you tell them uh, somehow, you know, wag your finger in their face and tell them all these things. It seems unrealistic from that standpoint. And I think Tucker was kind of clowning it to say this can't be a real thing, right? But from your point of view, you feel like there is some legitimate, uh, some legitimacy to the actual dinner that's being staged you feel like those two women those two lgbtq women are justified in sort of you know shaming the the white women for their racism no i found it to be fake okay You have a what else do you think? Um, 
I mean, just from my experience, I mean, I know, I don't want to say it. It's kind of, it's going to take us to a whole different type of show. But my experience when um, I passed, back in when I was younger, I used to walk by or see um, couples like a black man and a white woman. It, it, where's Zoe at? Oh, I don't see her. It just kind of felt like a superiority, mm-hmm. like the white woman looking down on the black person, in that case, me, as if I wanted her black man and I don't. And it's kind of like from what I've seen, like with within the families, like she'll, that white woman will be cut off because she's with married a black man or had children with a black man. She'll be cut off from her family she'll try to isolate that black man from his family. Like she won't get along with his sisters, parents, none of that. Like I see all that breaking down happening, just like what Zoe said, like the first thing they'll do is call the police. If they, if they get in a fight, they'll, they'll call the cops on, on that black man. Um, also from, I know, um, I know somebody's uncle who never saw his kids, um, like the wife took his kids, like it wasn't like a real big argument. He she took him, took his kids in the middle of the night. He never saw them again. So, you know, things like that, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I just, from my experience, usually a black woman, you know, will stay and not do that and turn their back on their black. I, from my experience, it's just, a, so let me get back to what I was saying about the superiority thing. Growing up, I don't know why, and just not knowing, you know, you just don't know anybody's background. Like looking at me, I'm a black woman, but I'm also half Dominican, right? So what I know from growing up is like, it's crazy, but it's like I'll if I'm sitting behind someone in class and they'll have like real long hair, like they'll act like they don't see you there and they'll like shake the hair in your face. Like it's like a superiority thing. And it's crazy. Like I don't know why. It's just in my from my experience, certain white women with money, like the ones at that dinner table, think they're better than black women and it don't matter how you know high a, of a black woman you are you know what i mean so yeah it was all fake just like what i said disingenuous it was fake they don't care at the end of the day if they're racist or not so what's the point of the whole thing okay now, I have a couple of questions. Do you as a black woman need white women to acknowledge that they're hell no, they're hell no. racism? No. <laughs> so then that defeats the overall After what I just told you. No, so exactly. they could asking. think they're better than us in their head. They're not. Okay. So I don't need them question. to say nothing. Here's what I'm saying. What is the purpose of a clip of a documentary that pretends to showcase these people who are of different status, different color, acknowledging their inner hatred towards a particular group of people? The simple fact. If in the end, those group of people don't need don't accept or believe it in the first to be true in the first place but the simple fact that they did the video is just evident enough of this 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 entitlement this audacity yes <laughs> like explain that explain that to me. this is why we, i think this is a political thing i think it's, we this is a- did not need you white these women to be the champions of Black people's cause. 
you know, it's like they want to pretend like they're allies in helping this social injustice against black people. Okay. You didn't need to do that. All you so need to gonna... do is in your everyday life, be a better person. We don't need you to pull a panel together and do this and shame some women into saying something that they truly don't believe or that they're never going to admit on camera anyways. Anyway, facts. They don't have the capacity at all. So you guys actually believe that some of those women sitting at the table were actually racist? Absolutely. You do? I don't care if they are. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> Truthfully. The, that's what I'm saying. Yes, they are, but we don't care. We do not care. I don't, I'm not going to say like all of them are not. I will say there might be one or two out of the bunch that is sympathetic but the rest of they're them they're living, their, they're living their bubble and as long as their status quo does not get interrupted they don't care so I take it as superiority mm -hmm. they I know 100% they think they're better than certain types of women all black women all black women because, oh, my husband's Mexican. Like, they don't, they'll lay in the bed with a man. <laughs> but they have a superiority complex with feeling higher society than black, black women. And it's so probably what? because, think about it, way back in the day, black slaves, black safe women slept <laughs> with the masters. Some of them white women weren't felt didn't feel the white wives didn't feel good enough for their husbands because they would sleep with the with the the black slate the women you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. and i'm going back that far because it, it it it's generational these things are like built in just like zoe said earlier this is something that's built in people that's not going to change because of a discussion at a table. Okay, so <laughs> what I would say is the following. I think there is a part of this I think there's a part of this that um that to me seems a little politically driven. I don't know if you guys was hearing the same undertone I was hearing when, when the Indian woman said, we should all get together and overrule the patriarchy. I felt like that's what this whole video was about. It's about, it's this it's subliminal messaging that's meant to get women pinned against men. So for instance, if I'm a white woman and you're a black woman and we're fighting each other over the fact that maybe your skin tone is different from mine, there isn't common grounds for us to agree on. But if I'm a white woman and you're a black, black woman and we both have some sort of hatred towards a man, our common ground, even though we're different, is the fact that we hate the positioning of a man, the patriarchy symbolizes a, a, a posturing of men having certain controls where they have certain, they're viewed in the very, uh, as the people in charge. So to me, I felt like that was the undertone in the video. It was a small little segment in the clip, but I felt like that's what was ultimately the undertone of the video. All I heard was not so much that this was a black white thing. I felt like it was a female against male thing. Because if I'm a female and I disagree that the patriarchy is a problem, then that means these women who are feminists <laughs> are going to not be on the same page with you. They're not getting you on board. And to me, all this stuff stems back to a voting block. It's about getting the, the, the po most populous group, which is women, there's more women than men in this country. And if all the women think 
and feel the same way about a particular problem, which is that men are the problem, then they can vote in such a way that gives a certain group access to power. That's what I was hearing. I mean, I, it felt like this was a racial thing, but to me, I didn't think it had anything to do with that because there's so many storylines here. The two curators of it was an Indian woman who looked white and a black woman who was, to me, a fanatic. I thought that lady was crazy <laughs> the whole time. When she was telling, sitting at the table, talking crazy to those white ladies, I thought she was crazy. Oh, you ain't never, and I'm never going to forgive you. And it's like, do you feel that because you wag their, your finger in their face that these people really feel like they owe you an explanation? Like, as I was watching these women's faces, they looked uncomfortable. They looked like they were paid to sit there and do this. And even at that point, they were super uncomfortable. To me, I felt like that lady was not the representation for all Black women. I felt like she was a fanatic. As I was watching that, I was like, she's not the representation for black people. Like, you know what I mean? There are people within our communities that does not have views that represents what we think. As a black person, we could think totally different. But to me, it's almost like we get clumped into this group think category. Because you're black, you're supposed to vote this way. Because you're black, you're supposed to think this way. Because you're black, you're supposed to take this position. And it's like, no. You could be a black person that thinks and views things totally different. You know, I, we have Rennick on, 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 online and he's got mixed kids. I have mixed, you know, cousins and stuff like that. I'm you know mixed. I mean? Okay. Yeah. But let me tell you this, Mr. B. So there are people that's going to watch your video and they're going to see your point of view. They're going to see my point of view. They're going to see Zoe's. It depends on the person. Exactly. Yeah, the person. That's true. I'm just telling you the way I connected to it. And, you know, I can't help that I have to, you know, go back and think about what I experienced, right. what my experiences are. You know, the whole thing, we all agree the whole thing was fake. So I don't, I mean, from at the end when the Indian woman said overthrow the patriarchy, to me, and it seem odd. That alone okay. doesn't tell me, oh, men against women. Like I, but, but I, I get what this. you're saying. This discussion but, is about race. It's about white women admitting that they have some inherent racial um, disconnect. She tried to throw that control. wrench in there about and the patriarchy, there, um, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> did y'all catch that? Like. What yeah, that but that's why you take you're like taking it from there. Like as a man, you're like, oh, I think this is about men against women. I don't see it like that. So how did you see it? You saw it. It was about white women versus black women. Superiority. So white women who are raced. Yes, definitely. All those women have money at that table. Okay. They try to justify and validate that they're not racist because they had a baby with this. Do they stay with these men? That's my point. No, they either end up in jail or they take their kids and they leave their ass. I put them on a, a crazy child support. I mean, black women do that too. Y'all, y'all, some black women put men on child support. So that's not something that's unique to not this black woman. Mm, no. So I'm, I'm saying I'm not saying necessarily you guys, but there are black women, probably a pretty high or comparable percentage. Who put their man on child support? That that is neither here nor there. What I was simply saying is, because you know, is is this whole exercise a rallying cry for women of affluence, white women of affluent um, status, to somehow get in line with these? minorities telling them what to do. You didn't see sort of the undertone of that? It didn't seem weird? Thinking about it, if these people are indeed elites, where they feel like they're people in power, why would they be subjected to the opinions and ideas of people who they deem to be <coughs> ruling over minorities to them? 
That doesn't seem odd to any of you guys. I'm going to tell you this. White women don't have to have money to feel superior than black women. It's a, it's something that they believe in their head. Okay, break that down for me. No, that's 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 straight to the point. That's what I that's my opinion about that. Why do you believe that? It's even worse when the white woman that does have money. Okay. Why do you believe that? You gotta you gotta give me some more <laughs> you gotta give me some more on that bad boy. <laughs> I already gave you some of that already. Just from personal experience and just like common knowledge, like just I don't know. Um what about you, Zoe? What do you think about that? Well, it's true. She's absolutely correct. They were raised to believe that that one overarchingly the white race is superior to this is Zoe. why every time they get in trouble they cry because think about it somebody's going to rescue them because they've been always been taught that they're the pretty princess mm -hmm. and, you know and you know you get what you want so let me shed a few chairs and all my guilt will be absolved it may not be intentional in their behavior but they are raised with that air mm -hmm. their whole life. And so it's 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 almost genetic for them. Even mm -hmm. though they're not intentionally being that way, their behavior is cultivated just by the way they're treated, by the especially if they're affluent, they're spoiled. Okay. So no, a, think I'm about wait before you talk, Mr. B. Think about the movies. Think about all these movies and even Disney cartoons. Back in the day when the you know slavery was still around, you know that mom had the black woman, the house slave. That house slave will have a child, and the the white woman will have a child. They will grow up as friends, but that white girl was raised to think she was better than the black one, and the black one would be like her assistant, her helper. Think about it, right, Zoe? Mm -hmm. Princess and the Frog. Princess yeah, and the Frog. Mm -hmm. Like, it's all in the cartoons. It's all in the movies. It's a real thing. It's a superiority thing. They, okay. they, they can be friends, but are they really friends? Does it but mean they're not racist? Married, no. Not the black girl. Okay, so here's here's what I'm gonna say, because you know my daughter have experienced some things at school. Here's what here's what I'm gonna say. I do believe that racism exists. So this is not me taking the position that racism is not an issue or that we don't experience it in the day to day aspects of our lives. The only issue, though, is the fact that it seems like some people choose to use racism as a crutch to prevent themselves from believing that people can't be good natured who have a different color of them. And as a person who have experienced, you know, I've had, you know, people from different colors be good to me, better than people from my own color has been. If you ever follow Little Wayne, he, he would say, you know, he has a story where, you know, a white family helped him. I've had that happen. I've had experiences where white people have helped me. I've had experiences where, Indian person, Spanish person, different person has helped me. I think to me, there's a couple of things that we need to look at. If we focus so much on our differences, then at some point we end up being handicapped by the, our differences, right? The notion that someone's uh, who doesn't necessarily share your complexion is your biggest enemy, I think it's the wrong notion. Your biggest enemy is your perception of yourself. The fact that there's a attempt to make you feel inferior to yourself, right? You know the truth. A white person is not superior to you, even if they thought they were. You know that not to be the case. An Asian person is not superior to you. A, a black person is not superior to you. No one is superior. A man isn't necessarily superior to you. You see what I'm saying? It's just a matter of having a healthy sense 
of who you are and whose you are, right? But, but I approach this mainly it's from to be, a it's to be yeah. the people that you're speaking of are not the overwhelming majority. Those are the rare few people who are genuine. Majority of them have their personal things. If and if it came down to a situation, if they had to choose for you over someone that looks like them, correct, they weren't going to choose you. No, you I've already had retaliation. Yep. That no, I, I can. So I can, you can do one thing that, that they don't like. They turn on your back on you. You I see the true color. Those people. Let me explain to you. Put, I a hundred percent fire. They would not have chosen you. I agree. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> a person that approaches this situation as a naive person. But so I think there needs to, to be. I think there needs to be a balanced approach to how we look at this. In the same but way that I don't want... It cannot be balanced. Hear you what have. I'm saying to you. Hear, hear what I'm saying to you. In the same way that I don't want a, a white person to look at me and assume that because there's a large incarceration percentage of black men, I don't want them to automatically assume that I'm dangerous. But they do. No, they do. But they what do. I'm saying is... To hear what I'm saying. They I, do. I don't necessarily... I know that they may... But I don't necessarily want that to be how I'm perceived. And I'm sure there are genuinely good white people who don't want to be perceived as if they're racist, even though there's racist people out there. This we're not talking about those white people tonight. I know, but time out. Stop for a second. But we're not only just talking about racism. We're also talking about microaggressions. They may not be fully racist in the entire world of racist. But they have microaggressions. They have assumptions. They have prejudices against no, black think... people that, when placed in situations, it rears its head. So they may not dislike black people on the whole, but there's certain behaviors and um, mannerisms that they assume about black people or they give to black people because through their upbringing, they've, they've been told that black people are lazy or black people are this. And even though they see it not necessarily true, it's there in the back of their head every time they encounter us. Okay. It's like a disease that festers. Okay. <laughs> well, look, I think the point that I want to make here, and I'm not going to change your opinion. You are entitled to your own opinion. I think the point that I'm going to make here is that as a Christian, and I'm, I'm leaning on my faith here because there's legitimacy to everything that everybody says, right? But as a Christian, I'm told not necessarily to look so much on the appearance of a person to judge them, but to, to judge more so the character of a person. Now, for people who may look different from me, but their character shows that there's some bias, then I believe that that's a legitimate reason to judge that situation on an individual basis. But for people that may look different from me, but their character is upright, then to me, I'm like, they should not be perceived to be that way if their character has not aligned in that way. That's all I'm saying, is that in the same fashion, there may be people that look like me, a black male, and feel threatened by my presence. But I would want them to put more emphasis on my character, how I've carried myself, how I've acted, more so than I put on the perception that they have of black men, which may be rooted in the fact that there's an, an increased you know, incarceration rate for black men. There are a bunch of black men that look like me that act like fools. Right. Which may feed those people's misconception of me. Right. In the same way, there are a bunch of white people that may look, you know, what I mean, innocent, but they act like fools. And that feeds our misconception of them. Right. Like if I see a guy putting his knee on somebody's neck for eight minutes and he dies. Right. It's going to fuel my perception of him. The next officer that I see that looks that color I may assume that he's exactly that way. And it creates this fear. And that fear, right, may be rooted in sound um, information that I've perceived that I've gotten before. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the next person that looks like that man thinks like that man and acts like that man. 
And what I'm saying is we don't want to get to a place where we just generalize everybody. I don't want to, I'm not a person that assumes all white people are racist. Although I acknowledge that some are. And what I'm saying is before we jump to any judgments, at least observe the situation enough to make that determination individually, as opposed to assuming that it's the blank thing across the board. Because I don't want I don't want anybody to think all black women are promiscuous, all black women are hoes, all black women are you know what I'm saying baby. You mama. just said all black women take their children's father child support. <laughs> oh, no, I so don't let me that. tell you. Let me tell you. I all I of our points that. of views are valid. No, I, I work around that. white people every day. I love some of them. I don't care for some of them. I look at people. For who they are, right? just like what you're saying. Okay. But this is what we're talking about. I'm here no. to keep it real. I'm just telling you no, what I'm my experiences sure. are from growing up. This is I, what I all see. Of, all of our experiences are valid. I'm not. I'm not taking anything you guys are saying and minimizing it because everyone has spoken some truth on this call, right? This has not been a situation where I'm like, oh, that's not how it is. I'm not naive. In assuming that all white people are good or all white people think positive thoughts towards people of the uh, opposite color, because I know that not to be the case. I'm simply saying there's a group of people who wants to keep us divided. And they want us to focus more on our differences than we focus on our um, on our the, on things that unite us. Right. And we could either feed that division or we could starve that division by how we perceive but just look i think i think you know what side we're all on of the, the panel though you try you're saying it's not about black and white or whatever but at the end of the day they had a panel of women to discuss white women being racist and the only black woman was there was the the lesbian black woman the crazy who, lady <laughs> who, exactly so it comes down to even in the the process. Yeah, the, there it, wasn't a proper representation. I know where you're going. There with was this. no representation. <laughs> Which is why, to me, I'm saying to you, it was gimmicky. It was not real world. It was gimmicky. No, it. But this is how they are in real life. In the fullness Same of thing in real world, exactly. And they approach. They look at it in a myopic view of their whiteness. It didn't even. I can barely. I can guarantee you. It didn't even occur to them that we probably should have more black women on this panel. It's a whole documentary, and there was one crazy black lady <laughs> who probably grew up around white people. The Indian problem probably grew up around white people, and they're not even true representations of people of color. The people. All right.